Welcome to the Deaf Dialogue, Dr. Shai Siddiqui. I just want to tell you that Deaf Dialogue is actually the Digital Empowerment Foundation's dialogue every week uh, with various kind of uh, digital development that is happening across the country and across the world. And uh, we used to do this in person in office for our staff, but ever since COVID came, we have started doing it online. Um, in this particular uh, episode of uh, Deaf Dialogue, we would like to discuss with you uh, uh, about the STEM for Girls that you have been implementing uh, with Digital Empowerment Foundation and uh, Quest Alliance in Assam and in uh, uh, Telangana. Uh, we are going to go through the uh, journey of thousands of girls that you worked with and your team, Pankaj Adhikari and Amir and Pawan and uh, several, several facilitators in both the states that you have been working with for the last three years, right? Uh, no, more than three years. Um, and uh, uh, we will discuss about this and uh, 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 want you to take us through that journey of uh, what is a STEM, How, what does it mean to girls, what does it mean to schools, what does it mean to education, what does it mean to community development, what does it mean to modern uh, uh, age of uh, uh, learning, because uh, it looks like that we can't do anything in learning without uh, uh, getting online. So welcome to the Dev Dialogue. Uh, please introduce yourself and uh, if you want to start right away, uh, with your introduction or would you like to show some movies or videos please let us know thank you so much for giving the, uh, this opportunity and just before we start uh, let me tell that i was the person that who was uh, leading this uh, program and because of several layers of uh, this kind of projects which especially in india a developing country like india it is very difficult that there was lots of myths about it and how the myth was, you know, uh, in, uh, countered during this period. So I'll just name few myths before we start one film. So that film will give you the uh, overview of that what exactly they were feeling as uh, teachers, or either teachers, or students, or the policy makers. So I have tried to bring all those perspectives, what they were thinking, how we did it, what the students are feeling after that. So that those are the things that it will give the uh, highlights or the overview of those projects. So let me start with the uh, film and then we can discuss about the myths and the challenges and the journey. <laughs> ना तो स्टूडेंट्स में था और पेरेंट्स तो मानते ही नहीं थे बच्चों को इसमें पढ़ाना क्योंकि बोलते थे कि बच्चे भी खराब हो जाएंगे समय के चलते नहीं आ पाती थी अब घर बैठे ऑनलाइन क्लास ज्वाइन कर सकती है मस्ती में झूम ले Stronger. Before reasoning, before like, this steps, I have very strange fears. When 
I went to uh, talk on speech, uh, talk on stage for elocution, I shivered a lot. After the steps plus, I became stronger. We have learned about our goals and ambitions. And after listening to sessions, we came to know how to decide our goals and what is the path we can reach our goals. And the way of us has improved in the setting of the goal is high. The field of science and technology. I think I like to take a look at the topic of the story of the child and fairy. Etc. You have prepared career charts and scratch videos on career day and scratch day. I thank my facilitator Anusha ma'am and IBM STEM for girls for making us learn all the new things and improving our skills. Thank you. We have learned about our goals and ambitions and after listening to sessions, we can know how to decide our goals and what is the path we need to reach our goals. हमारे पास इंजीनियर हमारे पास आई एस ऑफिसर नहीं हम क्या कर रहे हैं पचहत्तर सत्तर साल से अब हम क्या कर हमें हर तरह से हमें पीछे रखा गया है अगर ये दूसरी बात हम लोग शिक्षा में इतना पीछे पड़े हुए हमारा हमारे शिक्षा में हमें आगे बढ़ के लेके नहीं दिए आज आप चौरिया में जाएंगे देखेंगे कि बच्चे लोग आपका छोटे छोटे बच्चे लोग खेती में चला जाते हैं उनको पढ़ाई नहीं देते आप दस स्कूल बना लीजिए और कभी भी आपको बच्चे को Thank you very much. This gives a glimpse. You have changed the definition of STEM also, right? Yeah. Strength uh, was there that in SES, um, uh, efficient, mag magnificent. So uh, I uh, describe the personality that what the exactly after STEM that the girl can be or any learners can be. Like it's not only that you are thinking in a uh, one lens. But before that, I'll just give the glimpse that uh, how many states, how many schools we covered. So there were two states we focused. It was just uh, you can say that IBM's project. It was uh, pilot. They were doing the pilot in India to see the result and impact. So it was uh, covered almost 154 schools, and uh, and we it was actually yeah 144 schools, and we covered districts almost. Uh, around 22 districts in Telangana and four districts in Assam. Okay. So, uh, 20, 26 districts we covered, and we covered almost 60,000 plus beneficiaries at the end of third year. So, and 60,000 students and girl students. Yeah, including all. So, 60,000 plus. It is 60,342 actual number that we. Mm -hmm. So, this was the outcome after three years uh, as a. Uh, STEM project. So, uh, Dr. Shahid Siddiqui, can you also tell us, uh, you Hindi me what were the myths or what were the thoughts before the STEM or before the STEM or before the STEM? Because 60,000 girls and girls and girls are connected to the STEM, then there will be many teachers, many facilitators and facilitators. बहुत सारे लोग इसमें जुड़े होंगे मित को खत्म करने के लिए तो मित क्या थी इन लोगों में क्योंकि आप जो है वो गवर्नमेंट स्कूल में गए काम करने के लिए आप कोई प्राइवेट स्कूल में नहीं गए जहां पर अंग्रेजी के पीछे लोग भागते हैं या बहुत ज्यादा फीस देते हैं तो इसमें जो क्लास ऑफ पीपल है या बच्चे जो है वो लोअर मिडिल क्लास और उस तरह के लोग ज्यादा जाते हैं गवर्नमेंट स्कूल में और हमेशा उनके दिमाग में ये रहता है कि हमें इंजीनियर बनना है एमबीए बनना है ये करना है वो करना है मतलब एक एक सेट पांच दस स्ट्रीम ऑफ ये है उसी को वो एजुकेशन समझते हैं अच्छे नंबर ले से पास होना है लेकिन आप इस टाइम में पलट दिया आपने पूरा तो आप 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 क्या मिथ जो है आपने पाया वहाँ पे या मेरे पास फाइव मेजरली मिथ थे जो स्टिल स्टिल रिमेम्बर 
कि पहला तो हमें जीनियस होना चाहिए स्टेम एजुकेशन अगर लेना है तो हमें जीनियस स्टूडेंट हैं तभी हम ले सकते हैं कि वो एक नॉर्मल स्टूडेंट या ड्रॉप आउट नहीं ले सकता तो पहला उम्मीद था जो स्टेम वर्ड्स हो उनके ही लोगों के दिमाग में ये पेरेंट्स हो या टीचर्स हो दूसरा दूसरा होता था कि इस पर मल्टीपल टाइप ऑफ ये चॉइस टेस्ट होते होंगे उसमें कि अलग अलग कोर्सेज अलग अलग चीजों लेने में तो क्या हम कोर्स अगर टेस्ट पास नहीं करेंगे तो कैसे हम आगे ये कोर्स कर पाएंगे तो बहुत सारा ये कॉम्पिटिशन बेसिकली कॉम्पिटिशन तो तीसरा था कि इसमें कोई भी क्रिएटिविटी क्रिएटिविटी का प्लेस नहीं है क्योंकि इसमें आपको अच्छा। मैथ पढ़ना है फिजिक्स पढ़ना है ये तो इसमें क्रिएटिविटी आपको नहीं है वो जैसे एकेडमिक में होता है कि साइंस अगर पढ़ रहे हैं तो एक तो लैब में जाएंगे तो उससे ज्यादा आपके पास क्रिएटिविटी का ऑप्शन नहीं है क्योंकि अगर okay. तीसरा था कि जो भी हम अगर पढ़ के आगे स्टेम एजुकेशन करके होते हैं तो हम साइंटिस्ट ही बनेंगे अगर ये सारी चीज या तो इंजीनियर साइड में बने या फिर कोई भी टेक्नोलॉजी ने तो हम साइंटिस्ट ही बनेंगे दूसरा कोई ऑप्शन नहीं होगा उसके बाद से और जो लास्ट हमारा था वो कि ये हमारा ये जो कोर्स है ये बहुत एक्सपेंसिव है इसमें आगे बहुत पैसे लगेंगे अगर आगे इसको कैरी करते हैं या फिर आगे हम इसको परसीव करते हैं अपनी लाइफ में तो ये एक्सपेंसिव कोर्स है और स्कूल में भी अगर जाते हैं तो हो सकता है कि हम इस चीज को अफोर्ड ना कर पाए तो ये पांच ऐसे मिथ थे जो एक जनरल वे में हम लोगों ने फेस किए जिसको समझाना और जिसको अलग अलग लेवल से हमें डिस्क्राइब करना पड़ा शुरू में कि कैसे इसको तोड़े ताकि ज्यादा से ज्यादा फुटफॉल्स हो स्कूलों में तो ये हमारे तो डॉक्टर शाहिद सिद्दीकी कैन यू प्लीज टेल अस वन मोर थिंग इज दैट व्हेन व्हेन यू गॉट दिस प्रोजेक्ट डी एफ गॉट दिस प्रोजेक्ट एंड देर वाज अ प्रिपरेशन you know how to implement how many students and how many uh, uh, teachers and how many facilitators and all that uh when you went uh, into education there are always four stakeholders the school itself as an administration teachers students their parents and community right how did you how did you convince them that this is a new way of imbibing education yeah so how did you uh, do that so that was the biggest challenge before convincing them i was uh, first the person that who wanted to get convinced because i came from the ruler background i came from different mindset uh, different uh, background of professional backgrounds and all because education i knew the education is like something uh, like uh, under rte whatever the norms are there that you have to go through that and you have to have that but when you are talking about stem it's not about that because it was very difficult for me also to think that when people are struggling for uh, bread and butter and uh, daily uh, daily livelihood and we are talking about stem and how it is going to help them uh, in their livelihood on daily basis as well as well as for the future also because after 5 years down the line everything is going to be digital and if they are not ready for the future it will be very disastrous uh, for any kind of society or any kind of country that was so that was the biggest thing that in my mind that whatever it is first i have to get convinced because this is the necessity and you have to make future ready uh, students for uh, getting into the stem for so this was the challenge first we uh, brought the group of teachers for the orientation that they should have multiple questions that when we had the orientation we had always uh, encouraged them that uh, please ask the questions whatever you have in mind and we can Uh, work upon that that how to take it to the school level first because parents we are not involved in the first beginning because we thought that first school teachers where we are going to work they are their headmaster their teachers to be convinced first hand after that only we can carry this message to their parents so that was the first step we did secondly we did uh, with the stakeholders like government uh, support because it was very difficult to get the government support on uh, weekly basis or monthly basis through do office to give the space and time during those key school periods because they have the curriculum set curriculum set times uh, periods and everything in that how you can get one class every day for uh, stem so that was the biggest challenge for us so we pursued we tried to convince them they convinced got convinced and we selected few schools very selected schools uh, after the it audit it audit was the first step we in the selection process that where there is a library there is a computer lab only the, and very functional computer lab then only we can do the stem classes otherwise we have to uh, struggle for another infrastructure issues and all 
So that was the first step that we did the IT audit. And after that, we selected few that because this was the pilot to get the better impact. So these, so these were the steps in the school level and the government level we did it. And after that, after six months of the intervention, we tried to approach at the community level, engaging the parents in the parent and teacher meeting when it was happening. Then only we started bringing the parents and ask their own student that how they are feeling about going to the STEM classes. So though our campaigner, our advocate were like students only. We didn't do anything for the parents and the community. The students and, went to it. And, and what was the reason for choosing STEM for girls? I mean, why did you make the program only for girls and not the boys? I know that you took the boys also. Yeah. But why was it designed or approached for girls? So there was basically two things that what uh, IBM also observed while doing this project and designing this project at that time, that girls were the most vulnerable and the marginalized, especially when you talk about the education. And then because due to several issues like uh, the uh, dropouts uh, due to early marriage, they drop out due to socioeconomic condition, they drop out in a several issues like uh, uh, not secured place and not... Uh, so these are all the things that uh, they were thinking that we should target those that to bring out the, uh, bring the girls into the school at first go and we had to understand that why uh, this is the problem so that was the first in mind that everybody thought that yes we should work upon uh, this area and secondly that when the girls are uh, taught in a different uh, scientific temperament and also they will teach their own family that their own new family about the science and other things that they can be the carrier of our message and the program so that that was the second thought that, uh, to focus on the girls and that's why it was named also stem for girls but we included uh, boys also because there were co-ed schools we cannot ignore uh, on the for the sake of girls we cannot ignore the boys so they also got uh, into that but mainly focus was the girls that wherever they are they should not be left behind so uh, I, I, I uh, uh, along with other staff uh, and the board members, we went to uh, Hyderabad and close to Hyderabad to see some of the schools and the girls who went through the STEM. We were delighted to meet uh, many of them. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we realized that uh, uh, most of the students were talking in a very frank manner without any inhibition, with a lot of confidence, and uh, and 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 uh, uh, there was a lot of aspiration uh, among the girls. I took so many selfies with the girls uh, that uh, you know I realized that it was only because they were very open. They asked me to uh, you know give me my give them my mobile to create a group, and they wanted to be in touch, and we did. And they later asked me the photographs and all that. But what I am actually trying to ask you is that we went through the facilitator's manual also. And facilitator manual clearly said that, uh, you know, uh, uh, STEM is, is, is that it builds confidence. Uh, you know, you need to ask a lot of questions. You sh should be inquisitive and you should be frank and you should be transparent and you should be a sporty and you should be, you know, uh, uh, non-patriarchal and, uh, you know, non-feudal and so on and so forth. Now, if you see all this, these are all, all behavioral uh, science or uh, behavioral issues or the behavioral bottlenecks, whereas a STEM word is like science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And while mathematics can be seen as a language, science is a science, Technology is a technology and engineering is an engineering. They all actually three belong to each other and go to each other. So how does uh, STEM actually focuses more on uh, the learning process and the education process rather than the subject process, right? Because you also said in the beginning that myth is basically that everybody wants to learn either a subject or a particular topic or something, you know, concentrating on that and not realizing that your power uh, of learning is something else. Your body is something else. Your mind is something else. Your heart is something else. You might have learned uh, something else differently than something else, you know? So how do you, I mean, uh, 
I mean, I, I want to ask the design question that how did this entire facilitator's manual design to incorporate this behavioral thing uh, under the topic as step? Yeah, so that was the basic uh, idea of having this kind of, this was the version, I think the third or fourth version of the curriculum or the manual that we, uh, we made it at the last, because this was all on the learning process, based on a learning process, because uh, in the first uh, year, there was very, very uh, focused on uh, developing the scientific temperament, not talking about the behavior, because the, the problem was that uh, when they will not come to a school, they will not be convinced, then how you can teach the science or anything. So that was the biggest and we had a uh, tough time in the first year that how to get convinced. So whenever you used to talk, so we used to find out that what are the reasons, what may be the reasons, how we can uh, address those uh, problems. So we converted whole mindset. If you see one more thing, you can compare with the different uh, states, uh, STEM girls and uh, that what we have done in two different so you will also find some uh, some, uh, some differences you know that the level of the confidence and other things because of the uh, uh, the intervention style or intervention strategy also because my focus was to uh, to uh, address the first social problems because if you don't address the social problems you cannot go to the next level so that was the solution based approach that we also uh, had to have from the facilitator till uh, uh, till the top level that uh, the people sitting in Delhi. So everybody was instructed that you have to have the solution based approach. We cannot have the problems transform from one to another. If problems is coming uh, 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 from one person to other, it means it's a failure of one person who is transferring the uh, problem to others. So that will be taken as a uh, as a negative remark for the person who is leading that that level. So that was the one thing. Secondly, that we made uh, some program uh, or, and the mechanism on to connect on weekly basis. Weekly basis was like every Saturday in last three years. Uh, even it was holiday in school. Uh, even it was on leave. Everybody, but we had every uh, every Saturday one hour of interaction from the ground facilitators team. Delhi and the state levels. So we had every Saturday one hour discussion with the state team, one hour from Telangana, one hour from uh, Assam. So to understand that in one week, what they face the challenge and next week, what we are going with the solution. So that was the uh, benchmark, that was, that was the key factor that which helped us to understand each uh, on weekly basis to solve the issues on the ground. So we, we engaged more and more uh, in a different way. And uh, 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 can you also tell us uh, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, STEM and the philosophy that you applied in uh, STEM education, which looks like, like you said, 360 degree education. Now, 360 degree education is great, uh, but not at the time of lockdown or COVID or seclusion or isolation or uh, working from home. Uh, because most of the students went to home and uh, the schools were locked down and, and they were not going. How did you fight this situation of continuing the program like a STEM with 60,000 children in two states in 140 plus schools, which were not there, but the children went home? How did you uh, fight this and how did you continue and what kind of changes you brought into the program to, uh, to, to, to work purely online or through digital medium at the time of COVID for two years. Yes. So uh, as I told you that we completely changed our uh, uh, implementation strategy from problem uh, solving to sol solution giving. So we completely and it was a good opportunity for us to that to go through the lockdown period. And it was the very good opportunity to see that whether we are able to give the solution or no. And that was the very, very tough test for everyone from ground to uh, the headquarter team. So we thought that whatever the free tools are available, why we are not using it? Because we are engaged with the WhatsApp and WhatsApp is, uh, is everywhere, even at the village level. And sometimes uh, some phone calls also, IVR and all. So we thought that why uh, we can also bring those all classes through on the WhatsApp and uh, divide into sections, that each section should have 
the whatsapp group of each and every student and they can be a part of that so we can uh, guide them even they are at home so and but there was another challenge that data how they can afford the data so that was the biggest challenge when they were going through crisis financial crisis and all the data was the biggest challenge so we thought that why that means the bandwidth and the internet uh, time yeah and time as well as that that paying capacity like they cannot upload like when they are using data then it will consume much and much data so another thing that we thought that there is another problem because there will be bigger digital divide kind of thing we are pushing so that may mm -hmm. create another layer of problem so we have to have the another option to to have the flexible classes that without pushing to them you know for buying the data as and all so uh, so we found that there were some families or students they, they didn't have the mobile they had the only one mobile whose father used to uh, have with them, with him only for and when they go for uh, any work or outside they cannot access the mobile so that was another challenge that how they can do the classes when the classes is happening so as a third challenge was that uh, is there enough you know support system or if, even they don't have mobile at their home how they can uh, do the classes so three layers problems were there so first we saw that uh, whatsapp classes will be there that will continue those who are having access to the whatsapp and all second thing that we will have that ivr like uh, classes in audio mode audio recorded thing so that we can send the clips to the featured phone also that they can hear the classes and they can understand and when they can uh, they want to solve the problem they can call back to the facilitator directly and ask the question to solve that so facilitators were like 24/7 working they were on the on that mode then third we thought that uh, why don't we have something app like radio kind of thing that can give you five times uh, repetition uh, repetition of the classes that uh, any time they are available they can hear the same uh, time slot in the same time slot so they can uh, they can uh, do the same class those who have done through whatsapp also so there were three models that we had created and that was very successful and uh, other ngos also across india they adopted the same models after that everybody shifted to whatsapp class and online classes started emerging in the schools also after that they came on the laptop mode and other things so they, that was the beginning that first step that we took and that was also very very much recognized by the ibm and other staffs also uh, in the quest alliance so they also replicated the same thing with the another ngo partners okay so uh, uh, you know uh, but you must be missing the physical uh, issues you know the interacting with the teachers uh, playing on the ground uh, touch and feel uh, did you find uh, some challenges uh, uh, in that period i mean had you been given a chance to meet them yeah so that time it was uh, completely on digital so it was there was no chance to meet uh, personally or physically that to interact with them but definitely that gave the chance to make them more digital enabled persons that there was some minus plus positiveness was there that they became more uh, uh, technology friendly due to this digital shift and that helped us when they came back to the school it was easier for us to communicate uh, engaging the technology and the digital gadgets okay so uh, uh, let's close this uh, i i am seeing that uh, the way forward is looking like that uh, we need to create a very strong cadre of teaching community who understand stem so that they can take it forward on a longer level and therefore it may be necessary for the governments to include a stem as a medium or a curriculum necessity jaise aaj se 10 saal 15 saal pehle 20 saal pehle you know everybody was talking about including it classes in the um, in the in the curriculum it was it was not uh, earlier and then ultimately it came as a subject you know that everybody has to learn computer and now it is coming as a medium in the sense that everything has to be through computer. you know so uh, i am seeing that stem is is passing through that challenging time where it needs to be included first as a subject and then i think it is supposed to be included as a medium of way of life in the schools and education system that's the way i am seeing it and and that's the way i think uh, you know uh, uh, i mean i would request you to 
draft a uh, end line of this project in such a way that the way forward is this number one number two what you are saying is that df itself is taking on its own in the fourth year and further to convert stem into a maker space kind of ecosystem in schools and out of schools both which means you are creating a kind of scenario where in a place one can come for innovative way of learning innovative way of teaching innovative way of education innovative way of innovation innovative way of experiments innovative way of um, uh, everything you know uh, that's what maker space is about and that is what stem is also about stem actually allowed you to independently and uh, uh, without inhibition learn anything and and uh, use your uh, brain and mind and body and soul in a most natural fashion rather than in an artificial fashion i mean nobody has to i mean the elephant doesn't have to become monkey and the monkey doesn't have to become elephant you know and you cannot teach elephant how to climb a tree you know similarly uh, and 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 these are and every human being is different so uh, you cannot make everybody an engineer you cannot make everybody a scientist you cannot make everybody a doctor you cannot make everybody a mba you cannot make everybody a a, a coder uh so so uh, you know it's very important that we know what's my strength i may be very good in reading and writing i may be very good in photography i may be very good in uh, just speaking and so writing and so on and so forth so i want uh, you to uh, tell me is that where do we take this learning forward because your experiment and this experiment is only in two states only with 60000 only with 300 teachers only with 300 uh, schools how do we take it forward at a national level to make it a household uh, practice of stem so here uh, i see because uh, dealing with two states gave us the different kind of challenges different kind of uh, solutions also when we talk about assam and when we talk about telangana it's completely different approach if i talk about assam assam was completely <clears throat> alienated uh, state we can say in terms of adopting this kind of behavior it was very very slow uh, when uh, i compare with telangana it's like uh, we cannot compare telangana and assam's adopt, uh, adoption of this kind of technology and uh, new courses and all so we have to understand very well when you are going and approaching any state you have to understand first the cultural and the social behavior so that is the first thing that we have to understand secondly that when we talk to the teachers also that teacher teachers attitude because when we uh, i talk to teachers uh, uh, in assam so they were more interested on holidays that uh, when they are getting holidays when uh, there is leave so they know every each and every leave on the fingertips but when we talk uh, uh, the teachers in telangana they were more excited more extra they and it comes from the government side also how they approach the whole system so that is also the biggest challenge that we have to understand because it's not easy that we take any in any state and we implement in a, in a so we have to understand each and every uh, demography cultural behavior social behavior then only we can customize in that way okay great thank you very much uh, thank you for your time and thank you for sharing this